Welcome to the Kingdom Podcast, featuring Commissioner Christine King, where all voices are heard. Welcome to another episode of the Kingdom Podcast, where today I am honored to have Luther Campbell as my guest and my friend. How are you doing today? I'm doing just fine, Commissioner. Thank you for Chairwoman, coming. Chairwoman, I'm sorry. I always get that mixed up. It's Christine. Christine. Thank you for being a guest on my podcast. I explained to you earlier that this is really just a conversation. I wanted you to come on the show because you do so much for our community. You do so much for the Liberty City community. And I wanted to share that information with my listeners, my viewers, to let them know the great things that are happening in Liberty City that you are involved in. So since your days as a rapper to Live Crew, you've really reimagined yourself into a community activist, a football coach, and a volunteer with the Liberty City Optimist. Tell us a little bit about that and how you transitioned from nasty as you want to be <laughs> to who you are today. Well, uh, thank you for having me uh, on the podcast. Uh, I guess to answer the question, I mean, you know, I was, you know, I'm a kid from Liberty City, born and raised, uh, 58 and 11th Avenue. And, uh, you know, I, you know, I went to Archibilla, ended up going to school on Miami Beach at uh, Ida Fisher, and then, you know, high school at uh, Beach High. And, you know, I we basically was bust over there to play sports, play football. So right. for all my days, I went over there. And, uh, you know, met a whole bunch of great people and, you know, played sports. And I always said to myself, you know, if I ever get two cents over my lunch money, I'll always come back, you know, and start my own program over here so kids like myself won't be getting home, coming home at 11, 12 o'clock at night just to play organized sports. So that's one thing that kind of inspired me to be the founder, co-founder of Liberty City Optimist and starting that, you know, once I, you know, did get a couple cents over my uh, lunch money. And, <laughs> I <laughs> and, love that. Yeah, yeah, uh, you know, and, you know, uh, again, you know, coming from a family background, mom, uh, Bahamian dad, Jamaican, you know, so we basically came from a working family, mom, uh, lived over town mm -hmm. with her uh, right here, you know, frequent this, this place on numerous occasions as a kid. Um, you know, I always want to just give back, you know, that was my whole thing. If I ever get to a point, you know, that I can be able to be an influence, I'll be able to give back. You know, that's what we all was about as a family. You know, mom used to just bring in everybody off the street and, you know, feed them and, if they smell bad, give them a bar of soap. Tell them to go in there, and take a, uh, take a shower, and all that. And so, you know, that's what that's what I did. I mean, to, to uh, you know, get involved in music. You know, I was a DJ. You know, running around Miami like uh, all the other DJs, playing them in the park, playing at the gas station. Then we started doing the big splashdowns at Virginia Key Beach, and before you know it, became uh, a very popular DJ and and bringing down artists, one of the first artists to bring down, uh, you know, outside of Tiny Head from South Miami, bring down hip hop artists from New York and California and things like that. And that's how I actually got into the business, you know, bringing those artists down and you talking know, to I, them about I it. I copied your splashdown this past summer. Really? At Charles Hadley Park, <laughs> we had splashdown an evening at the pool for the young people, and I called it the splashdown. And it's crazy how a whole generation doesn't know what that was. Or, and my staff was like, splashdown, what? I had to bust the song out and <laughs> share with them. But I wanted to, I'm trying to find ways to keep our youth engaged, to get them off of the street. And in the summer, it's so freaking hot here. Mm -hmm. We have that gorgeous pool, yep. and I said, Let's have a splashdown evening for the kids, and yep. we did that. Oh, that's good. That's good. I mean, that that's that's something that's you know that's real important. You know, throughout the years, you know, we always uh, tried to you know work with different departments and getting kids jobs, and, and as well as entertaining them. You know, and one good thing you know 
with your help and, and uh, the past commissioner Hardiman, you know, the, 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 the work that you guys have done, you know, with the Optimus program has, enab has enabled us to be able to take our kids around the country, you know, uh, in the summertime. Mm -hmm. We take them, we don't take them to the, the regular, you know, uh, arcade, you right, know, we, right. we we do a big at Liberty City. We, right. we put them on nice, luxurious buses. Exactly. And, and, we should and, spoil our children. Yes. We should spoil our that, children. That's very, and that is very, very important, you know. And, and you know, with the help of you and and you guys, I mean, that that's what we're able to do because, you know, a lot of people are jealous of us at Liberty City because they see the pictures and they see us doing so many big things. And we always say it's a testament of our, of our city commission. But, you know, it hasn't always been easy for you. No, Because you, no. you have had a tough road. I watched the documentary mm -hmm. and I was astonished at how folks would just come after you, even when you had to go to the Supreme Court. Yeah. To fight for what is art, what is artistic. Mm -hmm. And, but you come out of it on the other side, smarter, stronger, mm -hmm. better. And we all benefit from, we've all benefited from that seminal case. Mm -hmm. So how did you manage that turmoil? When you were in it, in the midst oh, of it, it was, it was, it was, it was, it was some good days and some bad days because uh, if people really followed all the cases, it was, it was actually three cases going on at one time. Mm -hmm. It was one uh, where the parody was protected by the First Amendment. Mm -hmm. That was the uh, uh, Me versus Acre Rose case, which is the one that eventually ended up going to the Supreme Court, and then it was. Uh, Judge Gonzalez uh, out of uh, Proud County deemed the record uh, nasty as the one to be obscene. obscene. And then the third case was when he deemed the record obscene. You know, I was like, okay, forget about it. I'm going to go sing the record anyway in Broward County, right down the street from the courthouse. Mm -hmm. And we in eventually ended up doing that and going to jail. So we had three cases going on at one time. And uh, most people don't know about it. They all remember the the Supreme Court case, right. assuming that that case was the uh, the case, you know, uh, for explicit lyrics, which mm -hmm. that really wasn't. That was that was the parody case, uh, mm -hmm. where the parody was protected by the First Amendment, right. and people use that case right now uh, uh, for internet intellectual property right. uh, cases. It's taught in law school, yeah. first year, yeah. <laughs> first yeah. year law school class. Yeah, yeah. Con law. Yeah, yeah, and mm -hmm. I, you know, I get so many emails about you know young people writing theses and I get to go and speak at different you know either with me uh me and the uh, lawyer at the time professor rogo my professor that was your professor that was my professor really he was the coolest professor he took all of his first year students to his home for dinner wow we all had dinner at his house and i remember going to his house and looking at his home and thinking Oh my gosh, this house could be on cribs. The yeah. first house that I felt like could be on cribs <laughs> that I was in. And I was like, uh huh, this is how I want to You saw the African art? He's amazing. Yeah, very he, amazing. He, he was guy. amazing. Yeah. He's an amazing professor. And his, I, I got a ding by someone um, on social media. Somebody sent it to me because I don't really. Um, you know, I'm not in social media. Like, I'm not going to spend an hour reading comments and that kind of thing. I'm just not going to do that. And I have an amazing team that does the post for me. But someone said she she must not have been paying attention in Rogo's class oh. because um, I cut somebody off in the commission meeting. So I'm <laughs> taking away their First Amendment right to freedom of speech. You had your 20 minutes, sir. I, uh, your two minutes, sir. I didn't take anything away from you. But I was astounded. How, how did you know he was my professor? Wow. Wow. I mean, it, it, in this lifetime of Google and, oh my and research, and, oh my and I think everybody knows all, all the lawyers who ended up in <laughs> Bruce's class because all y'all came out great. You yeah. know, most, most, of the, uh, most, most people who ended up in his class ended up, you know, obviously passing the bar but then became you know great students uh great uh people you know after i mirrored being a student. i mirrored 
I was an adjunct professor at Barry University, and I mirrored how I wanted to be a professor by some of the stuff that I learned from him and others. Like, I would take the good, mm -hmm. and I would also take the bad. Oh, I'm not going to do this, because I had one professor. He would, it was his mission to embarrass you. Wow. And have you deathly afraid. And Professor Rogo was exactly the opposite of that. And I, I don't want my students, or I didn't want my students to be afraid of me. Mm -hmm. So I, you know, and I do that with everything I do now. But I, I, I got an amazing education. Nova Southeastern University, Shepherd Broad Law <laughs> Center. <laughs> Let me give them a shout out. I got an amazing education from um, that institution. Yeah, you had a great professor. That guy, I mean, he, he I mean, he taught me a lot. He always tell me, oh, you're a lawyer and you don't even know it. <laughs> uh, yeah, I mean, you know, we're going through all those different cases, just being able to walk you through the process and have you as a client understand the right. process. And that know. had to be scary too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I mean, whether it was picking a jury, uh, you know, sitting right there, me and him doing it together, you know, him asking me questions, uh, and, you know, preparation for Supreme Court and going to the Supreme Court with him and watch how he handled all those justices. And at that time, uh, Clarence Thomas had just been became sworn in. He mm -hmm. was he was a new justice, so we automatically thought we was going we were not gonna get a favorable ruling from him. But eventually, right. we ended up did. Yeah, uh, but it, it was amazing. I mean, you know, I talked to him all the time. He's in North Carolina now. He moved oh, okay. out of the house. He. Uh, he well, next time you speak to him, tell him I say hello. I and will I'm sure do he that. doesn't know I'm commissioner. And I'm pretty sure he does. <laughs> Rogo don't miss nothing. <laughs> yeah, he doesn't miss anything. So I've told you all, I've told you a hundred times, what's my favorite song? What do I play every year? It's your birthday. It's, and I want to <laughs> show you. Uh oh I want to, because I Don't show me the videos no, of the party. It, it's, no, I'm not showing you the videos. I would hate to see your but, assistant dropping it like that. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm going to show you. I have a birthday playlist. It, so you can see, and I play these songs every year on my oh, birthday. Oh, Trey songs too. Yes. So, oh, yes. I have 50 Cent in the club. <laughs> I have You, It's Your Birthday. I have Trey songs, Say I. And I have the trap, Beckham. Gotta have the trap. Okay. So, <laughs> my nieces, they turn six. They're twins. Um, and for their birthday, I played them that song. Every day, they tell their mom, play the birthday song. <laughs> play the birthday song. It does have that effect on generations of the generations. Yes, it yeah. does. It does. So how's coaching going for you? How's your season going? Coaching is good. I mean, you know, all my, you know, the, the good part about coaching and, you know, running the, the Optimist, I just got some great people working, you know, great volunteers, great people that actually work at Liberty City Optimist and at at uh at the school at Edison and it allows me to Red to, Raiders, we gotta shout them out. The that's Edison right. Red Raiders. <laughs> that's right. Uh and uh it's going good. I mean, you know, the main thing for coaching in high school for me is to be able to get these kids in college. You know, winning a state championship, that's all beautiful, but at the end of the year, the, those guys eventually ended up going to college is, is the most important thing. And, and to be able to get them in college, you got to stay on them about the academics. Uh, and, you know, majority of our kids, are all, majority of them are over 3.5 GPA. Wow. Yeah, we just, one of our kids, the top receiver in the nation, ended up signing up with University of Miami. Uh, he had a good spring game, Nathan Joseph. He went in and... Uh, he had a two, uh, 4.2 GPA uh, and went in, and it's funny that we were having a conversation about how's the transition uh, at University of Miami. He said, well, you work us harder in practice, wow. number one. Number two, uh, Coach, I'm the only one that don't have a tutor. And that, wow. that was that – That's was the, pride. That's, that that, is pride. pride. Yes, that is pride. That is pride. Because it's great mm -hmm. to, to play sports, but there's such a – only a fraction – that make it to yeah. the NFL. Mm. But if you walk out with a degree mm -hmm. and you can do something with that degree, you're winning. 
Mm -hmm. and, that, and that's the most important thing I, that I tell them. I say, look, you know, uh, it's only a 1% chance for you to make it to the NFL. NFL only has 1,200 players and only 120 jobs come available every year. Oh, so wow. The, and, the, and, you know, in NFL, it's a three-year you know, it's a three-year job. Right. You know, after right. three years, you, right. you're done. You're too old. Mm -hmm. uh, and so you have to prepare for life out there. And one thing about him and a lot of the kids that we coach and mentor at the park, you know, um, they they get it. You know, you know, you should be happy that one of our kids was a first-round draft pick from Liberty City Optimus just the other day. Really? Collage of Cancer, he played at the park all his life. He, First round pick of the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, uh, pick number 19 this year. So uh, he came out of that little program uh, that you guys support, that we've always uh, been out there for. So those are, you know, those are the, the stories that I like hearing about, plus them getting a degree. Because I tell them, look, even if, you, even if you make it to the league, which a lot of our kids end up doing, just, you know, the important part of it is to have that degree. Bring me a copy of the degree. Don't right, bring me nothing else. Right, right, And that, with you supporting them in an overall capacity, not just as a coach, but mentoring them and living by example, mm -hmm. they're going to come back and give back to their community. Uh, yes, yes, they do it all the time. And it's important that, yeah, we want to win games, but your education is also important too. Mm -hmm. And that you get from a coach that understands the community, where they're coming from, and have been here themselves. Yep. Because I've heard horror stories about coaches, they're just running you. Yeah, yeah. Running you, running you. Yeah. And then when you can't do that anymore, they have no use for you. Yes, after football season over with, they don't know what you're doing and where you're at. But the, the, and, that's, and that's the unique thing about our program at, at Liberty City is generations after generations. You know, like I, I remember when, when Keon played baseball, when he was a little uh, kid running around, you know, and, and Duke Johnson playing football and Le, uh, Levante Davis, the starting linebacker uh, for the, for the um, – uh, Tampa Bay Buccaneers and seeing all those little kids running around the program and then on top of it seeing some prominent lawyers and doctors exactly. and things like mm -hmm. that that came out of the program mm -hmm. and and so you know that's what it's really all about you know it and is. they all come back that's the great thing about it all of them come back you know and they give back like you know one of our kids who dra got drafted uh, two years ago Tutu Atwell uh, I know him. Yeah, he. I know him. Say, yes, same same thing. So, he partnered with me to do um, back to school, mm -hmm. and we we gave. He helped me get sneakers for kids because you know you could get a book bag on every corner. Yeah, yeah. But they need help with getting shoes and uniforms, yep. and he he was generous enough to give his time, his resources, and we did that for the community, and I was yeah. really proud of that. Yeah. And I had one family say, one young lady said, these are the nicest sneakers I've ever had, mm -hmm. and just breaks your heart. Yeah, it's, it's, yeah, I mean, they, they understand it because they were those kids who were standing right. in line getting sneakers. Right, right. You know, whether it was Devontae Freeman being dropped off at, at the uh, uh, Liberty Square Housing Projects. They understand that, and we always teach them that. You know, and that's, that's the unique thing about our little program over there. All of our kids come back. Either they come back and give back, or they come back and volunteer, and they'll be a part of the program, which is a, which is a beautiful thing. You know. Yes, it is. So I have a segment of my podcast called the Spitfire Round, uh -oh. where I ask you five questions and you have to answer them. First thing that comes to your mind. Uh oh. Okay. First thing coming to my mind. Oh God. Yes. Let me, let me humble myself. <laughs> First question: What is the most dangerous thing you do? The most dangerous thing I do: is stand on stage in front of thirty thousand people and perform. <laughs> is that dangerous? Yes, it is. You can get booed. And you're still performing now. Yes. You are not going to get booed. <laughs> you can get booed. Okay. That's the fear. <laughs> do you have a theme song? A theme song? Yes, I do. What's your theme song? Uh, right now, uh, it changes. 
right now. I'm glad you said that because my theme song changes with time as well. So what is your theme song today? Oh, man. You guys would be amazed as to what my theme song is. I might lose some street credibility if I tell you my theme song. You have to tell us then. <laughs> oh, oh, God. Oh, man. Uh, uh, it's, uh, man, what's the name of the group? Now I'm, I draw, can we go back to that one? I draw We can come freeze. back to that. What's your favorite book? My favorite book? Uh, <sighs> that's a good one. Uh, my favorite book. Now I'm trying to pick the room the right one. I would say, I would say um, Kama Sutra. Kama Sutra? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> okay. I just read an amazing book. <laughs> 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 I just read an amazing book. It's the sun. The sun does rise. Have you heard of that? No, not in between reading my book. And Never my mind. Book. Okay. Okay. Next question. Um. <laughs> if you could have dinner with anyone, living or dead, who would you want to break bread with? I would want. See, now I'm going from one extreme to the next. I would, want, I would really love to have dinner with the First Lady, Michelle Obama, just to pick her brains. Really? Yeah. I remember Pretty picking nice. the brains of, uh, uh, of the Vice President, uh, Kamala Harris. She roughed me up a couple times, picking her brains, like you. <laughs> you remind me so much of her. Uh, and your we have assistant. the same heritage, actually. Yeah, y'all roughed me up. She brought me up good. Uh, but I was, you know, which real smart lady, real intelligent. I did an interview with her. Well, she couldn't get to where she is today if she wasn't. Oh, she's uh, brilliant. You, uh, you, y'all remind me a lot of each other. Uh, but I would love to have a conversation with Michelle Obama. That would be nice. That yeah. would be nice. Last question. If you could go back and tell your 20-year-old self, give your 20-year-old self some advice, what would it be? It would be, uh, if I had to go back and pick, uh, tell my 20-year-old self some advice is to uh, do a better job in picking lawyers. <laughs> lawyers are girlfriends, ex-girlfriends. <laughs> you did a bad job in doing that. <laughs> okay, well, yes, okay. That is another episode of the kingdom podcast in the can thank you for being my guest thank you for everything you do for our community with me and for our youth because that is one of the most important things and i think that is going to be your legacy oh i hope so well that's a wrap folks thank you thank you <laughs> Kama Sutra, why would you say <laughs> You know, my mind is <laughs> Hey, I draw a blank. <laughs> All of them. I said, I got to get them to laugh. At one point, it's too serious. <laughs>